What's up everybody, this is Steve Stralacci and today we are going to look at the Blackstar St. James, the EL34 version. This amp is designed to be a perfect pedal board friendly, pedal platform, edge of breakup, or pristine clean amp. And the big thing about these amps is that they are the lightest tube amps in the world. So right now, I've got it next to me here. This is the Fawn um, EL34 and I mean, it weighs literally nothing. They're super light, super easy to carry. This is the matching vertical 212 cabinet that's got some special design speakers in it that are also super light. I mean, you could just pick up this whole rig and carry it like it's nothing. Both of them are super easy to carry, very easy to load in. This is definitely designed for the kind of forward thinking, more modern era guitar player that maybe doesn't wanna to go to the modeling route. And there are plenty of players out there that want to be able to go direct or have tried going direct and don't enjoy it because they miss the sound of their real tube amps. They kind of went above and beyond to accommodate those type of players and me personally being a full-time touring guitarist in a band, I go direct. I've always used my Line 6 Helix for our tours, but this is something that I could see using and taking out on the road or even in the studio, it's so easy to use. So instead of a transformer, this uses a switching mode power supply, which gives you basically everything that a full output transformer would do. And it's a lot lighter than a traditional tube amp would be. And something to keep in mind when you're thinking about this amp, this isn't trying to replicate something. The guys at Blackstar are forward thinking in, this is a totally different era of technology and amp. So this is not trying to be a Vox, or it's not trying to be a Fender, but the channels are tuned to sound similar to those type of amps, but they're more for the forward thinking player and not really catered to the vintage purists that want everything to be exactly as they were back in the day. I think that in the future, this could be the total standard for tube amps, especially for touring gigs or for grab and go session work. This thing is really something else. So the way the main focus and the way I'm going to use it today is I'm going to take the XLR out of the back, use the cabinet software, go into my warm audio um, mic pre and just directly in with nothing else. So no mic, no speaker, nothing's live in the room. I'll be using my 68 Tele here um, going into a pedal board. Nothing's turned on right now, but we'll get to how it takes pedals in a little bit. So this is the stock balanced 412s. This is uh, the first preset that is on the cabinet software. I should also add that I'm on channel one, which is supposed to be kind of like a fendery type of clean sound. And you'll see on the front panel here, you have all your basic amp controls. You have a volume for each channel and a gain for the second channel, which is gonna be that Voxy type of crunch sound. <laughs> And I can now just take this volume and I could just totally dime it and it's not gonna give you, it's not gonna blow anybody's head off. And you hear their built-in reverb, that's about, uh, what, like a third of the way up. So there is a built-in reverb. And the reverb is specifically tailored to each channel. So when you're on channel one, you'll have a different reverb than channel two. So let's keep the reverb uh, pretty subtle right now and uh, keep playing. And now I like it there because this channel stays really clean. It's meant to be clean, but I prefer it to be on that edge of breakup. So I have it a little bit. Slightly crunchy. Hey, let's now hit that with uh, Noble's ODR-1 and uh, hear how this thing takes a overdrive pedal. So channel one takes overdrive really well. Now just for uh, fun's sake, let's put on a little bit of a uh, vibe pedal. Mix in some overdrive and combine the two effects. So 
So that's channel one, um, takes pedals really nice. You can really fine tune things the way you want them. And um, let's go to channel two here and see what that sounds like. Right now we're using the same cab. This is still the Balance 412s. I really like the way that this sounds. Bring that gain up a little bit. So it's definitely got that Beatles type of crunchy sound that a lot of the Vox players like to have. Super chimey, uh, really solid sound. So now if I were to go on here and I'm going to go to the cab rig and I'm gonna change to the second preset which is called ambient combos. And you can see here that we are using a 112 cab. This is the classic USA open back and it's a 212 on the other side and that is a 212 Classic UK combo. I'm recording in mono right now, so you're not gonna hear any type of stereo thing, so these are panned straight down the middle. Kick on a little bit of delay and let's up this reverb since this is ambient 212 uh, ambient combos here. Let's uh, hear what we get here. nice that reverb is too. I like this a lot. So let's check out what the Type two, Type 412 sound like. So Type 412 to me sounds a little bit more like a higher gain thing. So I'm going to just take this gain knob and we're going to just take down the reverb, turn off the delay. So we're just going to crank up the gain of channel two and um, turn the reverb down a little bit. Tight 412s is a nice, a great crunchy sound. And you'll notice one thing, I haven't touched the EQ on this amp, and the way that the EQs work, they are separate EQs, so they're dual pots. Basically what that means is that each channel has a separate EQ as far as the way that the knobs react. So on the clean channel, that Fender clean, the knobs will react as if it was a Fender type of amp, and then when you go to the Vox style channel, the uh, knobs will act as if they are a Vox type of amp. And you'll notice that neither of those have mid knobs, so this mid knob is actually a cut or boost circuit. So flat straight in the middle is just a normal stock amp and then you can cut or add mids uh, to taste. Also really cool if you are gonna use the speaker, it does have power scaling so you can power scale down to two watts. It also has a sag where it's gonna kind of hit the power tubes a little bit different and give you that uh, more of a forgiving and a more sag type of spongy feel while you're playing through the speaker. And an interesting thing about this this has a built-in load box. So typically, a load box is a pretty big piece of hardware that is gonna be bulky and heavy. The way that they do this is that when you're plugged in DI, it actually powers down to the two watt, and then that two watt is loaded into the load box and sent through the DI. So you're still getting the full effect of the power section, and they're able to keep the load box super light by only needing it to handle two watts. And you can also plug into the cabinet and have the combination of the two. So the load box will kind of be disabled if you're plugged into the real speaker cabinet 
and the DI sound, since it's being loaded, doesn't make a difference. So you can use the cabinet and the DI at the same time without using the two watt switch. It also has a really cool built-in 10 dB boost on channel two. So even with the gain maxed out and the foot switch pushing it, you still get that perfect edge of breakup, that chiminess that you wanna get out of a Vox style amp like this one is. All right, so now we switched over to the Les Paul, made a couple of EQ tweaks, and we are gonna go into the Architect, and we're gonna go with this Throaty Combos, which is a 110 Classic USA Combo, and a 110 Classic USA Combo. All right, so it's like the same, it's like having two mics on the same speaker, essentially. And um, here's what these Throaty Combos sound like on the clean channel. I feel like this sound would really sit well in a track. Um, let's hit that with the Nobles here and see what we get as a pedal platform. Cool, let's switch over to channel two and let's let's dial in some real crunchy sounds here. So this is gonna be the type of sound that I would use on a track here. Um, when it calls for some big rhythm chords, I like these throaty combos. Even though it's kind of a mismatched cabinet here, if you wanna get technical, but that's part of the fun of this is that you can mix and match things that you wouldn't typically do. All right, now let's make that into a lead sound. Let's hit it with the Analog Man Prince of Tone. All So now that we're a little bit higher with the gain, let's go with some, what's a cool, warm 412s um, in the Architect software here. <laughs> So you can hear with humbuckers and single coils, it sounds great with both. You're capable of getting some great lead sounds. Takes pedals really well. It's like the perfect edge of breakup, whether you're a Fender fan or a Vox fan. Um, Blackstar really did a lot of good work on this thing and kind of made it the ultimate gigging and recording situation where uh, you don't have to bring a heavy cabinet, microphones, preamps, and have to worry about all that stuff. So if you're interested in a Blackstar St. James for yourself, there are affiliate links in below. I do get kickbacks from those clicks, so I'd be greatly appreciated if you do decide to buy one to use those links. And uh, let me know what you think of these in the comments, and I look forward to hearing from you guys. And if you did make it this far, all the way through the demo, I very much appreciate it. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.